Can you do the intro this time without doing the uhs, though? Like, can you just nail it? Can you just really get it in there? <laughs> I guess not. What, does he try to do the, the actual monk intro? No, so, no, no. So every week it's, you know, Frank says, uh, welcome back to oh. the uh, Bungie podcast. So does NPR. <laughs> and you know what? There are three podcasts ahead of you, Luke. <laughs> I don't think... I Just don't saying. Think... When you can beat Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me, you can t- criticize. <laughs> I don't think NPR does it. I think it's the yeah, faux NPR that's no, on they, they Saturday do. Night Live. Oh, okay. Think. What's her face does? With the Bungie kids... With plasma pistols glowing, it's our podcast show. With Brian and friends and Frankie. Listening to the 57th Bungie podcast, probably. I don't know what number it is, but we've done a ton now. We have a special guest today, a very, very special guest. I'm Frank O'Connor. Uh, Luke Smith's here as ever. But uh, instead of Brian Gerard, we have Martin O'Donnell. Hello, everybody. You're filling the hole of two men. Yeah. Ooh, wait a minute. Can we start over? Because <laughs> no, no, there's no, an no, image no. in my head now. Why don't we just smooth over that with <laughs> spackle? Spackle. And a verbal spackle. Um, Martin O'Donnell, uh, lead, com- lead composer. What is your real title? What is your last title? At uh, the latest title is, well, we can't go into the latest title because right, it's still but, sort of potentially yeah. under review, yeah. but uh, audio director, composer. Right. And uh, For Bungie. For Bungie Studios. No. Just Bungie. Uh, Bungie LLC. No, uh, they don't even say LLC anymore. But that's what That's it just is. assumed. All right, fine. Kids so do we have care. to change the name of the podcast then? Because it's the Bungie Studios podcast? Yeah, it should be just the Bungie podcast. Okay, get, get working <sighs> on that, guys. Yeah, we'll get right on it. It's a top priority. We'll change anyway. it for season two. <laughs> Semantics <laughs> aside, uh, Marty, as everyone knows, uh, composed, wrote, scored uh, the musical soundtracks for Halo 1, 2, and 3 along with his... Uh, Composing partner, uh, Michael Salvatore. Mike Salvatore. Uh, and, uh, and also you run the audio department, period, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So Audio director. And uh, work with Jay Wineland and C. Paul Johnson. And yeah. other great guys who come in every once in a while when we're in crunch. And yet you, you don't have a proper 5.1 set up in your house. Is that right? Oh, that's not true. I do, but I, I haven't put it up on my 50-inch plasma screen yet. Right, but that's, that's where you need it. Yeah, I know, but I have it up in the what we call my wife affectionately calls the man room. Hmm. My man room is downstairs, filled with water right now, thanks to flooding in Washington State. Oh, see, I thought that was all double entendre again. I was no. trying to follow that. No, I'm a, I'm we don't really no. actually do a lot of that. That's, That's good. I'm glad to hear that. No. It's I've mostly rumors. Can't. The rest of the show is going to be cat memes, right? <laughs> Ver- no, and verbally, cat they're memes. nowhere near as funny as pictorially. <laughs> yeah, That's I true. T- yes. But uh, yeah, my basement's flooded. The uh, papa room is uh, filling with mold as we speak. And, that's, so that's true. Your basement actually is flooded. Yeah, right it's though. not a lot of water. Probably a couple of gallons total, but uh, enough to wreck the carpet. That was mildew. There, so, yeah, mildew. And, and gross dangerous, uh, dangerous toxins. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, so I'm going to set up a proper... Uh, five one setup, which you were going to give me some advice I, I, on, straight, because for home really stuff easy, you yeah. have the you've got you could connect it. Yep. That's what I like. Yep. But you Good. want uh, you described your room to me. I think you need a, a Pioneer VX series HDMI receiver. Kaching. Uh, no, we, they're, we they're, get, they start three fifty. No, no. What I mean is, don't we get something for you know? You'd think, yeah, it'd be good if we could monetize this in some way. That'd be well, awesome. Anyway, let's you start get yourself monetizing. Let's Pioneer, go. Pioneer Pioneer VX receiver. And, I love uh, Pioneer. A set of uh, properly matching uh, Mordon Short uh, 5.1 speakers and sub. 
and you'll be good to go, and your wife will. So like you didn't have to say speakers. properly matching. That is mm-hmm. something I I do understand the matching. Well, they, they should. I mean, it's the easiest way to get good sound. Like if you start mixing and matching speakers, you you're in no, a lot no. of trouble. What I'm saying is that goes without saying when you're talking to me. I know that you match well, speakers. Well, a lot of people will try and buy a more expensive subwoofer because they think that for some reason their low frequencies need to be better. So have you seen my studio? I, your studio is is great. You have uh, the ivory tower. The yeah. ivory tower. Monitor quality, reference quality, hyper speakers. You also have uh, that old Xbox 5.1 setup down there, which, to be fair, the one with the Mirage style speakers, oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. polar ones, right. those are actually really good. Yeah, they're not they're bad. They're probably at all. the bargain of the century for they speakers. Are. I know. I'm so, like creative, if you can connect them creative, to something, yeah. something more impressive uh, receiver wise, mm-hmm. you're, you're getting a lot of money's worth of speakers for very little cash. Yeah, that's not, we, we check out, you know, regular old stereo through the TV and then the big reference monitors, and then a more home system kind of surround sound, so. Yep. Yeah, what about those sound bars? You ever tried one of those? The 5.1 emulation Yamaha. It's just a single speaker. It looks like a big long what? center channel. No, I haven't they done really that. They really work, too. They come with a sub. It's very wife-friendly, I'm telling It's the most really? wife-friendly solution yeah. of all. It matches your TV. You just now, stick it under there. I've seen bang. those on television, where they, but I, I don't believe that they can give you the impression of sound coming from very, behind you. Very convincing. And it's not, the sound does actually end up behind you because of the way they bounce it off the room. Uh, it takes a little he, he, he bit He believes of all that stuff, doesn't he? So he sees the no, no, sales I mean, pitch and he believes it. He actually, I think it, he does he probably They're all directionally mounted, all the speakers wow. inside the bar. Yeah. Uh, beautifully calibrated and all that. But uh, it's not as good as 5.1, but it's a pretty good compromise oh, really? for a wife. Yeah. Okay. For Hawaii. Yeah. Well, well, you know what we're talking about. No, I have no I've, idea. My wife is Your wife is a paragon of taste and virtue, <laughs> yes. so she, there's no way she's going to want you dangling cables all over the room. No, that's like, where I'm going to hire a guy, and he's going to wire it up for me and make it all go away and disappear. Yeah, you should have Bertone do it. Just hire, know, you know, Bertone, Bertone says he will. But Bertone put a jacuzzi tub in the floor of his bedroom. I don't know. <laughs> if he should. Is that and true? Yeah, yes. he has a jacuzzi yes. tub set into the floor in his... Okay. Now, so that's a man room. It is I mean, a it's like room. a chick trap. <laughs> he probably puts, like, straw and leaves no, on it. No, as a matter of fact, there's it's a jacuzzi tub, and then you see some glass bricks that are only, like, half yeah. height, uh-huh. and then there's yeah. a shower Yeah. in the bedroom. Yeah. Now, to be honest, let's just be honest about this. Paul didn't exactly build that himself. It but was he there bought when he moved the in. house he embraced because it. of this yeah. feature. That's yeah. my opinion. He embraced it and he bases his yes. life around it. <laughs> and it's still there. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. he, he should he, if he really was not happy about it, he would have he remodeled. Pre- he pretended to complain about it when he first moved in, but just put some twigs and sticks over it. And- <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> leaf, like shoes, like a pair of Prada shoes in the middle. Of the <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> what? I'm just saying. <laughs> well, Sketch is out six, so uh, yeah. get he, well, Sketch. He normally leads all the interview stuff, Marty. Okay, He's so. sort of the guy who who grills. About what people do here. This is why we're rambling. He, well, he know, well he knows he knows everyone. And he's been here super long. So, Frank, you're gonna have to sort of drive it. Because if I ask Marty questions, it'll just seem real. Well, no. Except the, the good thing about you asking Marty questions is that uh, you, you you're genuinely curious about this stuff. So. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> Marty and I have talked about it. <laughs> I'm like a little curious monkey. Yeah. Well, uh, Marty, let's get uh, straight down to business. Literally, right. you just released uh, Volume Two. Mm-hmm. No, not Volume Two. Sorry, <clears throat> OST, the, the original soundtrack for Halo Three. Right. Um, I've only read uh, one review of it so far. Oh, see, that's and a just publication so I had to call the Imagine Games Network, <laughs> formerly known as uh, IGN. Yes. Uh, they gave. I can't original. remember what it is. Seven I actually, seven. yeah, because I asked them. I said, "You know what a yeah. cool number is? Is seven. Yeah. And they said, "Well, we, what if we gave it a seven point think, seven? I'm like, "Oh, that is irony? that's very cool." Yeah. Do you think the reviewer got the irony? Well, he did what I asked him to do. Yeah. Sure, I'm sure of it. I didn't yeah. detect much irony in the review. Yeah, However, what I did detect was a lot of complaints about it being too long, which I thought was a little weird, because it, it made it sound like it was inconvenient that it was so wrong. Last time I checked, when you're playing music, you just like organize your playlist the yeah. way you like it. Right. So. Like, so, I mean, and just, the philosophy behind the Halo 3 songs. soundtrack is what I said on it, but I wanted to say, look, you've played through the game, and now if you just listen to the soundtrack from beginning to end, it'll be essentially like playing through the game with the music in order, right. just, you know, arranged a little bit more tightly. Right. And uh, it turned into, you know, an hour and 20 minutes or something, and then there were some bonus tracks, so it's about a two-hour CD, and... Uh, that means you get two CDs for the price of one. I don't see how that is not just a bonus. Stuffing it with value. There you go. Yeah. And honestly, most kids are going to like rip it to their 360 or their 
MP3 player, their Zune or their iPod or whatever. Right. And, and just take and the three pieces the way they, they might like. like. Just, yeah. Now, is it okay <laughs> if someone rips it to their 360 and then plays the soundtrack music while they're playing the game? You know what? Absolutely. I, I don't see why they couldn't do that. Yes. Luke just blew my mind. <laughs> just saying. You know, maybe I you want You could that. be playing Halo 1, 2, and 3 music and be playing any part of any one of the games. Oh, that's not true. Because it doesn't work in Halo 1 and 2. Won't that prevent you <laughs> I forgot about that. from playing 50 Cent or Korn while you're in the lobby, which is all I get. Yeah. So. You're playing Korn in the lobby? No, no, no. Okay. People are playing at me. Oh. Over that's my too TV bad. whenever I'm I mostly play Britney Spears. So let's talk a little bit about the actual music of Halo 3, because I think that that's okay. what people probably want to listen to more than uh, your guys' advice about matching speakers. <laughs> uh it is. You're gonna dis- cut all that part out anyway. So it's no enough. way. I, we don't. It's gotta be authentic. And we're also and gonna get letters complaining that we didn't talk about that for long enough. But let's. Okay. Go ahead. So let's talk a little bit about the music in general for Halo Three. There's sure. a lot of a lot of themes that are returning throughout. What was the the intent, the purpose, and do you feel like you executed it? Um, yeah, I definitely feel like I executed the the intent, which was when I first started thinking about all the stuff we wanted to do in Halo 3, and I also thought about the fact that we're returning to... um, There's going to be a point in the game where you actually see Halo 1 or Halo Installation 04 being rebuilt. Spoilers behind. Fine. Uh, these we should say spoilers, right? I mean, we're spoilers. Oh, it's, no, it's, gonna, it's a late. spoiler-filled show. The whole okay. of this is gonna, should know that, but uh, <laughs> if not, tough. Good. So uh, I thought, well, I'm going to want to bring back some of the themes that, especially, were heard in Halo One, and then I had some other themes in Halo Two that I thought had started started to take on uh, some significance to the whole series, and some of the pieces I felt deserved to be rearranged and reorchestrated, and I had the opportunity to have a large orchestra and choir actually redo some of these pieces, and I thought, well, that's the way I've always wanted to hear them, or at least it would be a cool way to hear some of these pieces, of uh, both versions maybe standing uh, on their own, but for Halo 3, I thought this would be a cool thing to do. So I went out and recorded a lot of that stuff, not knowing exactly where it was going to be used. And then as I was putting music together, recording and composing music on as we're moving through the game and then finding places where some of these themes were significant. And so, yeah, I felt pretty good about it. Well, that's, uh, I mean, you know, that's the literal meaning of a theme. It's thematic, right? So you mm-hmm. have to, um, it, it's just like a movie trilogy. You have to have those sort of foundation pieces for, you know, when, when Master Chief is fighting, you know, when Aragorn is riding a horse, there needs to be, you know, yeah, recognizable. I, you know, if if there, if certainly there is, there's always the possibility of saying, "Hey, it's a new game. I'm going to do all new music." But that was never creatively even an option for me because it's the third chapter of a giant trilogy. There has to be consistency throughout, in my opinion. And you know, the Master Chief is still green, Cortana is still blue, and so you're going to hear the monks and you're going to hear the cellos. And there you go. So no cellos. I play the cello. Did I tell you that? Mm-hmm. No, you I, didn't. You know who else plays the cello? Yo Yo Ma. Fellow Hawk from TV's Airwolf. <laughs> I did. I played cello in high did school. Did you really? Yeah. Now, see, I've asked you before yeah. about your musical background yeah. because he has a really good ear. Yeah, he does have a very good ear. And he has a good voice. Can't read music. A- as, but no, as wait a minute. How do you play are. cello and not read music? Uh, I would learn the songs from listening to the... the oh, you had cellists. Two, you had too good of an ear. There was two cellists, so I would just learn by memory and I could play the notes. But then when we played live, I would not play because I was scared. Air cello. Messing up. They call so it I'd air cello. air cello. Mm-hmm. And then eventually Mr. Wood, our music teacher, found out I was doing that and yelled at me. Mr. Wood. And has did you get Mr. beat Wood. up then? I mean, you're no. a band kid. No, you had, to, you had to take an instrument to be in music class at all, and you didn't have any choice, so it wasn't band camp. See, now, it's not the now, same thing now we realize how here. far Luke is away from reality in terms of music, because he yeah. called you a band kid, and yeah. you played no, cello. Uh, I mean, That's an orchestra the, kid. Also, we just lumped all those kids in the same group. <laughs> no, you, you're forced to the do music Hooser. of some kind. It was either that or you play the recorder, the flute. And it, I asked for the double bass because then I would have been a cool hep cat. But um, <laughs> there, there was only one double bass and it was gone. It I was played either the flute. that or something really hard. So I only had four strings. I, I did the math. I've even got an extra finger. This is going to be easy. <laughs> exactly. I've got tiny little stubby fingers as well, like a carny. Um, <laughs> He's you know, an architect. Did you know that? No, I mean a carnival workman. Oh. Not, not Chris Carney. Oh, good. So it was like a racist term you just used. Yeah. 
<laughs> I think we find that the carnival is an activity. Yes, <laughs> not a race. An entertainment. Well, there are races there. Yeah, of course there are. There's like races the, in this room. The, we got Irish over there. We got uh I was Irish talking about bumper cars. Why are you going to uh, turn it into a Lithuanian Smith, that thing? Could be Irish. Wait, I thought you were Scottish. Yeah. Okay. My last name's Irish. So. He picks whatever. Sometimes he's making, from England, sometimes he's Irish. Okay, we talked about this before. He pulls the Scottish card out whenever it's convenient to him. Yeah, Frank pulls his own race card. Sigh. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, yeah, so... So did you hear me say I played the flute? I still play the flute. You guys don't even know that. But James I played the Galway. flute. Well, sure, why not? Well, not as quite as good, but I played the flute in, you know, grade school and junior high. So we talk about being made fun of. <laughs> Yeah, that's kind that's, of a, it's tough. A, yeah, it's a softer instrument. It's <laughs> <laughs> but it was embarrassing to carry the flute to school because it's this little dinky case. and You didn't just stuff it in your backpack? It is backpack. Satchel? You know how long ago <laughs> I went to school? <laughs> you didn't, you, you there guys were didn't no some backpacks sort of... back then. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> I like, had a lunchbox. Put a big rubber band around some books <laughs> and head out. There you go. Nice. Uh, books? Oh, yeah. <laughs> You mean he t- tied a reed around a papyrus stack and... It was clay tablets, yeah. actually. So the original plan, Marty, was to have you come on the show and like... talk about music. Ages and, and ages and ages and eons true. ago. And then, unbeknownst to Frank and I, remember when that little website showed up? Which website? The website full of the clips of audio from the, the soundtrack. Oh, the one that Marty gave out, doled out like a... Santa, Santa Claus. <laughs> yeah, and all of a sudden, like, the whole idea of having Marty play music. You know, and... I feel like there's, a, see, in marketing, you want to, like, attack on multiple fronts. So we had this nice website with clips, and we could have had a nice podcast from Bungie with music and talking and the thing. Well, but and it would have been multiple marketing fronts, but instead you guys got all ticked off that <laughs> somebody had a cooler-looking website that you could put together and... We, Frank, yeah, all the coding Frank and I do on the yeah. website. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I see uh, how it is. So you so punished flesh. me. Essentially, you punished the fans by not having a podcast prior to the <laughs> the web, the uh, music coming You can't out. even say it with a straight yes, face. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about some of your favorite themes from Halo. I think that my favorite stuff from the Halo 3 soundtrack is... Uh, what is it? It's like sev- it's seventeen. I want to say it's like seventeen B. Do you remember? <laughs> yeah. Do see, that's the thing. What it's oh, see now. No, he's, no, he's got the special no, soundtrack like, that yeah, was all well, unnamed. He has yeah, the early. I version. have the MP3, so I don't know any of the. Why don't, why don't you have a few bars? No, <laughs> it's um, it's from the Covenant though. There's like the the four suite from the four song suite. I think that was from the Covenant on the soundtrack. Mm. And uh, the middle theme in there is a combination of like. Oh. Really soft choral music. And the piano thing? Yeah. Oh, well, that's actually when you discover, when you rescue Cortana. It's the rescue Cortana theme, but actually it should have said rescue Cortana as, as the title, but that's sort of like a At the time, it, it didn't have title. the words. No. Yeah. Yeah, I like, I, I like that theme, too. Actually, it's a combination of, like you said, it's actually a slow version. If you listen to it, it's two themes being played at the same time, the classic Halo theme plus the... Um, Earth City theme. Not Earth City, but the, uh, oh, man. Yeah, excellent, Frank. So whatever theme that is, which I can't remember at this moment, but it's being played slowly in the violins while the piano plays. Uh, I don't remember the themes. names. I should do, but I don't. But my, I like Actually, all the piano Actually, the piano stuff. plays that theme, and the yeah. strings play the Halo theme. That's well, how the, I like the piano. That's the to me, the piano is a forerunner noise. I don't know why, it just is. Mm. It's sort of like mm. hard and glassy in a way, and it, it reminds me of foreign architecture. Is that I'm not being pretentious and being like a simpleton associating, <laughs> associating music For a change. with I, textures. I can't tell if Marty's like nodding like he agrees with you or nodding like I, I don't well, care. Common it's, <laughs> it's evocative for me, so it's subjective just like IG interview. Even though earlier <laughs> we proved that they were scientifically wrong. Do we have to keep wrong. talking about that scientifically wrong? Well, I would recommend going to read all the reviews at iTunes, which actually I think I have. There's like 125 reviews or something. Yeah, I know you have them all uh, taped to the front <laughs> Yeah, of absolutely. Door, so, uh, you can go downstairs and read them <laughs> read out them loud. There, yeah. I've been reading them to the boys. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, music, you know, music reviews are inherently subjective, I think. Yeah. But, what is um, it? But again, the, the IGN one was dead wrong. It's scientifically incorrect. <laughs> Can't be helped. 
So to switch gears briefly, I was thinking sure. back to when I was watching on the legendary edition of the game. There's mm-hmm. the night that you and Jones and Joe mm-hmm. sat down yes. and uh, went through a smorgasbord of clips from Halo and Halo 2. Mm-hmm. And uh, watching it, I was wondering, why did you cut it off? It was about to get awesome at one point. Like, Jones started to talk about the end of Halo 2, and yeah. you're like, no, I'm not going to talk about We're not going to talk about that ever. <laughs> what? Well, what's the deal? I got you know, the fans want to know. Why, you know why'd you cut it off? What's interesting is we... We did that, as you know, all in one sitting. And as we were doing, I was thinking, you know, no one is really going to want to listen to this because we started rambling and being – it's almost like this podcast. I'm sure no, everyone's all already tuned out by this point. Um, no, I don't think you, you don't think so? the people listening. to this <laughs> Some but of anyway, them are I don't falling remember, asleep too. But. I don't actually remember what we said on that. So refresh my memory. I don't remember cutting Jones off. We were all, Joe and I were just trying to get Jones to actually talk a little bit more. Yeah, I think it got to the point where Jones and Joe were about to tell how Halo 2 was really going to end. Because <laughs> I remember I was watching <laughs> oh, the yeah, whole time. Yeah, yeah. Because at one point earlier in the, earlier in the Halo 2 portion, um, after... I want to say it was sometime after, like, the Forerunner tank discussion. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jones, Awesomeness would ensue. I remember that. Yeah, Jones was talking briefly, I think, about uh, how, how the game was going to end. And he's like, oh, well, we'll come back to that when it's more relevant. And as the game, as it's ending, and I'm watching, you know, the, the whole final sequence, and I'm like, oh, here we go. Going to hear it. What's, what was going to be the real ending? And then you just kind of, you're like, no, we're not going to talk about it. So that. here, yeah, I don't know if I've ever revealed this before. You guys ready? Some exclusive reveal? Maybe I revealed it on that show. I don't even know. I don't know. Um, the actors actually did record the ending to Halo 2, and I still have all that. I, What's the deal? deal? <laughs> why don't we do that? Why can't we have an audio I thing? You know, the next podcast. It could be. <laughs> we could actually cut together the whole actual Halo 2 ending the way we originally planned it with the actors doing the – the scene is that something that we're. I mean, is that something you'd even be willing to, to give out though? I mean, no. you, yeah, see, yeah, thank you, <laughs> but I, I just want people to know that it exists. And by the way, it is not That's a mini, great. it's not a mini version of Halo 3. Halo 3, of course, we always planned a trilogy from the beginning, so I don't even know what I'm talking about. Wow, that's like telling people that Star Wars exists with no Jar Jar in it. <laughs> <laughs> why, why would you do that? Because uh, I don't know. But speaking of Star Wars, like uh, you're famous for having written the uh, Flintstone Kids jingle. Mm-hmm. Um, what, are, what are some of your uh, favorite video game composers? Oh, wow. See, now I'm going to leave somebody out. No, I mean, I mean like you're... It's okay, people, they're not listening. You established that, that. You know, the uh, Jesper Kids of this world right. and the Martin Galways and all I, those. I believe it's Jesper. I don't care. It's, you might as well say Bajork. Bajoric. It's not Bajor. It's not Bajor. <laughs> Chick with the swan on her. Yeah, it's Bajor. It's Bajor. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I, lo- I like Jesper Kid. I've, I've met him, and he's a good composer. And Jeremy Soule is an excellent composer who's done Oblivion and a bunch of MMO things that I can't think right now, but everybody knows what they are. Um, Jason Hayes, Blizzard, or he's not working at Blizzard anymore, but he did a lot of really great Blizzard music. Jack Wall who also conducts the Video Games Live concert. It's done beautiful music. Enon Zur, oh gosh, I'm going to leave people who, do, who does the most addictive video uh, game music Well, you know what, time. actually, well, the Koji Tetris Kondo. Guys. Koji Kondo. All right, yeah, and I've met yeah. Koji because he was in Chicago for the one of the play, con- the, one of the concerts, and I got oh, to meet he? him and Nobu Uematsu. Yeah, Uematsu, like, uh, beautiful, I, I love his beautiful music too. scores, but big orchestral pieces. Koji, I like because he does weird stuff, and it's really complicated, and it's incredibly uh, memorable. Yes. Like, you remember every bar. It's probably because we played all those Mario games so much, but, like, you start humming an obscure Mario tune. And people will finish it. And they will uh, they'll finish it mm-hmm. with no perfection. Now, a part of that is, in my opinion, it has to do with the age you know, Luke is making the table squeak, which I'm going to have to edit all of this out. No, you can't really hear it, though. I'm, I'm the only really, one with the headphones. Yeah, no, yeah. Okay. Well, you're, you're bothering me. <laughs> oh, sorry. And Frank, by the way. Um, I was going to say, what was I talking about? I don't even remember. Koji, Koji Kondo. The thing is. The, the thing secret is. The secret is. Posing like Koji Kondo. Listen, well, kids, it, it's, it's a little bit like jingles. It's, right. it's the repetition actually works. And if you're a young person watching Saturday morning cartoons, for example, and the Flintstones vitamin commercial came on, you heard it a lot, so that's why it sticks right. in your head. You, you write a, well, the a, other, a tune that'll stick in your head. Koji wrote a great little tune, but boy, you played 
that first level, the outdoor level of Mario One, and uh, you just heard that over and over and well, over. I mean, it so it just becomes a reason too that helped him, right? Which is memory. Yeah, oh, it was eight know, bit. Wasn't yep. They can, from you know, car, two so. voices, and I mean, what he was able to do with his tiny amount of technology was unbelievable. And, that and part it's fun. Of the, it's still fun. That part of the business is gone, though. Yeah. Like the 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 sort of invention through constraint is gone. Yeah, except that there are still people who are doing, you know, like certainly. I mean, the the DS is like way better than the eight bit Nintendo, but you're still constrained a little bit with some of the handheld game machines, and yeah. you know. There are people who are doing sound and music for your cell phones, and <laughs> that's pretty constrained. So right. I'm but just not one of those. Typically, the games I'm playing now, it's full orchestra score it, with no restrictions. I mean, that happened even with Red yeah. Book Audio on CD, but nowadays right. it's which, just... Which it's really kind of funny to me because all it really means is that you can record whatever you want to, which means there's no reason to record a full orchestra and a full choir. It just it happens to be something that's a great, basically, if you think of it as like a, an instrument, it's like, I'm going to use the orchestra, but you could just as easily use just a solo kazoo and still have it sound high fidelity. It might even be really effective. Ukulele could be really fun. Right. There's nothing tech, you know, technologically limiting about that. It just, right now, it seems like orchestra is a thing that people like to have because now they can make it, so- it they can record it and it sounds good in the uh, game machines what well, steals I mean it, it's very uh, very straightforward theft from movies because they're not even copying TV like scores they're copying movie scores and bigger bombastic. Yeah, actually you're absolutely right there's there's something there's like a there are cycles that these things go through and and you know even in jingles there was a time where like there would be a lot of jingles with a lot of group people singing Mr. Clean Mr. Clean and you know you had men and women in unison singing these jingles and then that falls out of favor and you, you have you know just ambient solo mood music or you have solo guitar or just piano only and you'll see these little cycles going happening and movies for the I think since you know probably since the John William days has gotten into this habit of always having big bombastic orchestras all the time almost and Mm -hmm. i i I don't think that's always going to be the the case tv already moved away from that and then comes back to it moves away from it and comes back to it so games are just going through a another cycle i listen to uh, yeah i agree i was playing a game recently uh that did that but i really liked it It uncharted has really good music Mm, cool um i don't know who the composer is i should know but i don't Really nice orchestral stuff. But is that Drake's Fortune? It is. I, uh, what's it called? Is it Drake's Fortune? Or is it Uncharted or is it Uncharted? Uncharted Colin Drake's Fortune. Sweet, I love Colin. Anyway, um, the uh, well, I have an image again in my head. No, you t- tend to. But the anyway, the uh, that's what I'm playing now. But um, movies with the best soundtracks for me are movies like you know, Kill Bill or uh, a David Lynch film, where it's just a lot of good but. Sp- Sl- slightly obscure rock. Like a Wes Anderson like a yeah. Wes Anderson movie. So you pop in your CD and you're like, oh, I really like that song. Where did I hear it before? It was like, oh, it's on this movie that I've just bought the soundtrack for. But the, um... Well, that's but, what the... Yeah, but ga- I haven't from. heard a game soundtrack except for Grand Theft Auto, uh... The Miami City's one. Yeah. Vice City, yeah. Uh, that was the only <laughs> one where I thought they really nailed it. It was just... A, it was Excellent a, it was collection. Like, yeah, collection of the. In fact, that's from the, time. the best '80s collections yeah, it was a great ever 80s made. Collection. I agree. So that I mean, it's all licensing, but there is a there is an art to that. There is an art mm-hmm. to picking good good songs for your uh, for your game. The, the difference between what I'm talking about and Vice City, though, is that you choose the order those songs play by choosing the radio station. In the yeah, game. and I think there's a difference between in 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 a game like Vice City or any of the Grand Theft Auto games or a lot of racing games. They use the the idea of having a radio, so you're playing songs on the radio, but it's not really feeling like you're scoring the experience right. of the game. In a, in a film, they're choosing it to match a mood that they're trying to Yeah, and even when they bring in, you know, licensed tracks in movies, they'll usually have, there'll be a score that scores the drama, and then they'll have the sort of a montage section that has, you know, a licensed song in it. And the ones that work the best for me are the ones where the song seems to somehow fit what you're watching. So, and sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. Like every Rocky movie ever made. <laughs> yeah, when yeah. you said montage. I, immediately I was in Soviet Russia. Yeah. I was there. I know. I had, I was carrying a tree around in the snow. I don't know what you were yeah, doing. Yeah, no, I was running up a mountain in yeah. big furry boots. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Uggs. <laughs> Mount, 
Um, but uh, so, what about movies? What are, who are your favorite movie composers? Oh, uh, Jerry Goldsmith is one of my favorite. He did. Uh, what did he do that people would recognize? The Omen, didn't Jerry Goldsmith? Yes, do and he also did Alien. He did Star Trek, the movie, the the motion mm. picture. Star Trek. No, he's the trying to think which one. The undiscovered country. <laughs> the search for Spock. Did he do the first uh, one? I think he did the first one. Yeah. 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 Who else? Uh, Lalo Schifrin. I still love Lalo Schifrin. I actually, I've met Enter these guys the Dragon, was... greatest movie soundtrack of all time. That's true. He did do that. Yeah, of course he did. And he, you know, he did all of the James Dean movies too. Mm, wow. But you didn't know that because he and James Dean were at the uh, actor school in New York. The what's the famous actor school? Boys, come on. Chilliard. <laughs> the kids from fame? The thing that yeah, that the dude does the thing fame. from the show? <laughs> the Inside the Actors Studio guy? For the James Lipton? Arts? Not James Lipton. But somebody on the John Favreau? <laughs> Part, dinner with Five? It's the yeah. Method Studio. Second the City? The studio that did <laughs> invented the method. Oh, you guys are useless. Oh, it's like a so terrible young. episode of Family Feud. <laughs> <laughs> we're not terrible. Service. 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 We're not useless. We're eliminating all other possibilities. Yeah, yeah. The method's cool. Chico What's State. Uh, all right, never mind. All right, so anyway, he was in, in the 50s, he was in school with James Dean, and then James Dean got this movie deal and said, hey, you should hire my friend Lalo to do music. And I knew that because Lalo told me that at lunch when I was at USC. But what was this? What was that sound? That was did the most just, dramatic did lunch. Did you just drop a name, Marty? <laughs> yes, I did. That's why there was a sound. <laughs> lunch <laughs> at USC. But, uh, Lalo Schiffer, as you know, old I, school, though. I mean, oh, yeah, has, Mission Impossible. He did. Dun, dun, yeah, he did the original. Dun, 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 dun. And he, you know what else he did? He did uh, Cool Hand Luke, which is also ABC Eyewitness News music. That was uh, one of the, the it was one of the first color movies, kids. Uh, <laughs> Steve McQueen. No, jeez, Paul Newman. <laughs> Paul Newman. That's How do you right. not know Cool Hand Luke? I bet you Luke here himself. Yeah, it's named after the guy eats the eggs, right? There you go. No, yeah. I was named after the Bible guy. Not even. A you know, good Luke Star Timmons Wars was guy. named after cool Paul Newman and Cool Hand Luke. Really? Yes, that's what he told me. That's that what sucks for him. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of weird. Bible Luke was a doctor, at least. <laughs> cool Hand Luke was in prison. What about Luke uh, Skywalker? No, nothing. No, could have been wish. Luke Skywalker. Every day, wish. You were actually, it's a biblical reference for you? Yeah, oh yeah. You wouldn't guess, would you? I would. You've got a huge beard. You look, you look like you look biblical. himself. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, with the glasses and everything. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow! Now I've lost it. Oh, yeah, anyway, so uh, Lalo Schifrin, that's old school. That's too old school. Let's come. Uh, let's Hans up Zimmer, I still think he's done a lot of really good right. stuff. And then the, those younger guys, like the Braveheart guy, what's his name? Uh, and I think he did. He also do uh, Titanic. Those are some nice. That's that's Howard like Shore. the Lord of the Rings guy. Howard Shore. Oh, I like Howard Shore. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But didn't he do? Who did Titanic? But Howard guy? Shore didn't do Titanic. It's that other guy. Uh, it's with it's a one J. of those guys. They all start the. The last of the Mohicans, like type dude. And yeah, you know what's another good score is that one with De Niro where he's in the river and he's done a the cross. Mission. The mission. Yes. Oh, great score. Almost Who did that? Mer- I thought it was Jerry Goldsmith actually. But mm. I should have brought a laptop song. and just said on I am check. Well, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> How is this interesting to people? Well, because they want to know what, uh, who you then steal They all find your out music what you from. like, yeah. and then they go uh, buy copies. And, and they then play them side by side, and they're like, go, look, oh, stole that. Yeah, stole <laughs> that. That's a march. Stole it from John Williams. Oh, Beethoven. <laughs> this sounds familiar. Yeah. John Williams stole that march from John Williams. Yeah, I know. Well, if you think about it, Beethoven's fifth. I know. This is Mar- Marty's all encompassing theory, kids. Here we go. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Halo. Da 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 da. Da, 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 da. See? Star Wars. Dan, 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 da, 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 da. What? How does Star Wars? No, Frank, fail. That's not. Still a march. <laughs> <laughs> so you took Marty's theory and you were about to lift the veil I, I on his kill, creative it. process <laughs> and he just ruined it. Yeah. He just smeared Kleenex that. all over the window. Uh, yeah, Marty's theory is that Beethoven's fifth uh, invented all music. <laughs> subsequently. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, pretty Just much. As Everything if, goes back. If, and even things that were before Beethoven's Fifth actually, you know, were because of Beethoven's yeah, Fifth. Because this of Nostradamus' time, time preview warp, yeah. of uh, Beethoven's It's a physics Fifth, thing. Yeah. It's like 13 dimensions. Isn't there 13 dimensions But how now? do you... Here, Marty, I've got a weird question for you. It's slightly off topic, but you're a musician. How Gee, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. So it's the same kind of question you've been asking this whole time. No, well, no, go no, ahead. No, these, the, these others have been <laughs> believe me, this lasers and laser-focused <laughs> podcast ever. I'm going off topic a second. How come mm-hmm. different cultures have different 
different types of uh, music for different emotions. And here's my example. Sure. Uh, a Chinese tune mm -hmm. that I am informed is supposed to be a happy celebratory thing <laughs> actually sounds maudlin and dirgy to me. Hmm. So what are... I thought music had a sort of universal emotional resonance, but it actually has really cultural specific resonances for people. How does that work? Um, you know, I don't really know, but I have thought about it a lot. And I, I think a lot of it has to do with associations. It's And, and music is extremely culturally uh, sensitive. So when you hear music with certain experiences early in your life, that's what you ex associate your emotional of that moment with that kind of music, right. which is why music appreciation is so subjective. And each culture, especially if they're more isolated for thousands of years, are going to have a whole different tradition. Hmm. So it's like picking chicks. Like different different cultures value different things than chicks, right? Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Miss Tonga had a large <laughs> woman. Hot, <laughs> but large. You know, I have two adult daughters, Luke. I, and oh, as a matter yeah. of fact, Marty's you realize <laughs> yeah, this is, this is great. the realization of knowing that what are you again? Oh, yeah. Right. I don't even want to know what you are because you're like you the don't. same age as my Anne Growing yeah. daughter, the yeah. girl who sang Anne yeah. Growing. You were if the same Luke, age. If Luke was dating your daughter, it would be perfectly reasonable. No, not ever. <laughs> no, I mean in society's <laughs> eyes, it would be. I don't even think society would accept that. Really? You yeah, got an I email think... address? My yeah. space <laughs> <laughs> no, thank goodness. Look, I kid. I know, Marty. Like his son. No, I, I, oh, he, he I just embraced you into the family. <laughs> My space. Uh, but uh, I'm Jeez. I'm taking his name. <laughs> That's right. That's the deal. That's how it works with my daughter. Luke O'Donnell. I like Why it. Not? It's just wrong. I need oh. another. I need another syllable. I'd have to switch to like Lucas. Yeah, but I mean, think about it. the name you have right now. Sorry, a little bit common. Little spondaic. Yeah. <laughs> no accents anywhere. It's totally boring. Spondaic. Yeah. Okay. Let's... It sounds like a profession as well. Luke Smith. You're, it's like you're a guy who's good at looking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, looking. Yeah. Look over here. Oh, here we go. There we yeah, go. With the racism. <laughs> <laughs> That's ethnic, not racist. Yeah. But what are you doing now, That's Marty? I mean, you're, you're a musician. Yeah. Are you doing music right now? I'm uh, playing in a, in a little club, and uh, I got a little brandy snifter on the top of my piano, and people come in, put dollars in when I play I the songs do, they I like. Would, if that was real, I would be all over it. <laughs> <laughs> You delivered it so convincingly. Oh, like, are wow. you, you're joking, right? Yeah, you're, not, you're not really down somewhere playing piano, no. man. No. Otherwise, he'd have Dave Dunling on his piano crooning, <laughs> wearing a like, chiffon. A chiffon dress. Yes, it's, 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 it's glitter. Uh, yeah. That would be great. Uh, no, I am, uh, I'm just preparing and working on the next big thing from Bungie. And all the little things, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what to. I don't even know what to say to that. Yeah, we 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 don't. We're not going to let not, you in on any of that. Well, I'm not going to let anyone in on it. <laughs> not on the podcast, you're not. No, anyway. but I mean, as audio director, and also, I'm sort of. I don't see why I can't talk about this, but I'm I'm taking a, a little bit more official role in the dramatic arts of Bungie when it has to come comes to all the things that are involved from cinematics and video production and. Some writing, uh, not that I do the writing, but I, I want to make sure I can. You would be like consulting. You'd be like the guiding hand. I'd be like the group creative director. <laughs> so, wow, so, that died. <laughs> like, well, we, we, Depends so, who's listening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one listens. It's okay. But Are it's you? just sort of keep all the dramatic arts of Bungie sort of under one. Gentle it's under one roof, wing. and it's the roof that you built. It's, a big right? tent. Yes, it's yes, Marty's Big Ten yes, philosophy. Yes, it is. Um, it is. And, uh, and it's a happy, warm, fuzzy place to be. Well, since I mean, we we can't really, and there's no reason to speculate and try to look look into the future. But what we can do, and what we have been doing recently with guys like Dave Dunn and mm -hmm. Chris Barrett, who are two pretty recent guests on the show, is talk about the past. Mm -hmm. And you're a grizzled ancient, aren't you, Marty? Mm -hmm. I'm more grizzled than just about anybody here. Because no, no, no. Really? Because I, no, hang on. You got to understand. Well, I, we want to. Understand. I was working with Jones and Seropian back in '96, 1996. So there's well, not no. a whole lot of other guys who go back that far. Now, I wasn't officially a Bungie employee at the time because I actually made more money because I had my own company and they paid dirt nothing. But I was a, I contracted with them. So tell us a little bit about those days. What did you do back then? What were you working um, on? Well, I was still doing a lot of jingles <laughs> and uh, movie scores and stuff like that in Chicago. 
and had also gotten the gig to do uh, sound design for Riven, which is the sequel to Mist. Then I started talking to guys in the area and found out that Bungie was just down the street, so talked to them, and they said, yeah, we need someone to help us with Myth. And so I went over there and started working on Myth Knocked with Jason. Siege of Madrigal and on a MIDI synth. Absolutely. And uh, yeah. it was fun. Jason back in those days was very young, very young and excited and energetic, and he'd come over to the studio and jump around. And you saying he's not young and energetic No, and he's anymore? pretty much over the hill at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, as we know, is always eternally youthful. <laughs> well, I love the looks on your faces. Aren't you going to help support me at all? You're no, well, help. this is the no. You want to hoist yourself on your own <laughs> petard? It's the petard. auto petard. <laughs> <laughs> so, talk uh, a little bit about the, those old days when you were here, Myth, and who was there, and what the office was like. Um, this was a those pre- were the south side of Chicago days, and they were in the former girls' school. I don't know if you've seen about it. And it was a haunted place, by the way, and it was also in the middle of some pimp-laden, infested, drug, horrible place in the south See, side I, of Chicago. I can't And they really had this weird, you know, old former girls' school. And, and you would walk in there, and it smelled like a frat house Didn't after have an a empty really pool long in the weekend. basement? Is that the one with the empty pool in the yes, basement? Yes, it, it was did. filled with slime. It was, it was, like, slime it was like Silent pool. Hill, It basically. was. Actually, you know what? That place really did sort of seem like Silent Hill. Yeah. I mean, creepy, yeah. dark, echoey marble hallways. Marty would weird keep his stairs coffee cup in a hole in the cracked bathroom tile. I didn't even. Just to I, didn't even uh, I never. I just visited there. I wouldn't actually do any work there. I would just go over and try to figure out what they needed, and then I'd go back to my beautiful studio on the near north side of Chicago, and yeah, see, my twenty two hundred square feet of red oak flooring, and mm, I would standing waves. I, no, I would inv- I'd, <laughs> I would invite the guys over to do sessions, and they were like, "Wow, can you really have studios like this?" And then, you know, a couple of years later, they moved up into that area. True, true story. The guys, you mean the bungee guys? Bungee guys, yeah. On a cold, hungry. Shot. So, what were they doing? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, were they, what were they doing at those sessions when they come by? Um, mostly, well, Jason really enjoyed directing the actors, so I have. He would come in and have, he wanted to hear the actors work and he would he'd scream at them to be louder or something. He wouldn't scream. It was actually a lot of fun. Would, would you describe Jones' directorial style like Luke, George Lucas's? Like, <laughs> all right, now faster. You uh, for that stick. It's he would, be he would, later. he would, uh, the funniest part was when he was asking the surly dwarf to, hey, can you One some, last push! Can you, uh, can you say some swear words? And he would then, Say the swears we want him to say, and very loud and very the swears that we have never had in a bungee game to this day. Oh, that one oh, word! That uh, you know what I'm talking about. I think we've had that word in a the bungee. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, F-bomb? he was trying to get the surly dwarf to throw the f bomb, and I pushed the, the mute. Dwarven folk have gun and, potty mouths. Let me tell you. I pushed the mute button, and I said, "Jason, that's my father." He didn't realize that the surly dwarf was my dad. And so Jason literally just collapsed on the floor. He was so embarrassed, and he was that was it. I, I stopped his directing career right then. So you squashed that dream of his. I did, I did. No, actually, that's not true. He, he always helped out with all the scripts you and should, acting You at should that point. point out that the surly dwarf is a character in myth, not... Not your father's stature, nor <laughs> although you know nor, my dad's kind of a short guy, species. and he has a little gray beard. He, right, he, he's he wearing a little pointy hat. Uh, yeah. Is your mom super tall? You got huge uncles because you're no, tall. I know. I don't get it. tall. Yeah. yeah. Graceful though. Don't Graceful in, in, in stature. Yeah. So to, that was one story <laughs> from those days. What's the why? Uh, why not sharing more? Well, you, I don't know. You have to so remind me. So that was that was way back in 1996. Yeah, 97 uh, actually, probably when we were recording the voices for Myth. So what happened between the time that you were recording Voices for Myth between you coming on to Bungie? Like, did you just keep contracting? Uh, so what we did in that Myth period? One and we did Myth Two, and then we contracted for some of their other games that they were working on, including Blam. And then we had the we heard about Bungie West, which was working on Oni. And we were, you know, helping to do marketing stuff for them and, uh, you know, movies. And um, anyway, uh, one of the things that happened, actually a very large thing that happened in 1999, is my studio burned down. And, I mean, completely. It was it. That was it. So, Like the fire from Legal Eagles? Yeah. Oh, no. I, I don't it, know this one. Was insurance scam? <laughs> 
You know, the, you know what I'm talking about, right? Uh, uh, no, like, this was seen legally. If it was, a, if this was a scam, I had no part in it. But it, I still wonder if Mike had something to do with it. But I'm just, <laughs> he's swearing he didn't. Anyway, uh, but he does live in that gold-plated palace. Yeah, now, I don't right? get yeah. that. So yeah, we uh, the studio burned down, and uh, we actually opened up shop eventually into a video studio, relatively close to where we used to be. They needed an audio department. We decided, well, we'll we'll just go in there. They help partner with us. Bungie was just across the street, basically. And then at some point, Alex and Jason came to me and said, hey, you know, we want to change the contract again on Halo and Oni. And I'm like, what? You're killing me here. What's the deal? So they finally said, well, you know, instead of you just continue to refigure how much it's going to cost to do Halo and Oni, why don't you, why don't you just come work for us? And I said, oh, okay. And basically, I had to think about it a little bit. But, but at that point, they were able to sack up. They were able to sack up. Yeah, and then once I we negotiated the whole deal and Mike was going to stay at the O'Donnell Salvatore Total Audio Studios and run sort of the commercial side of the business, and I was just going to go, you know, basically across the street, almost literally across the street, and, and just work on Halo and Oni and continue to go back to the studio, my recording studio, to actually do the work. So even after I officially was working at Bungie full time, I was spending probably 50 hours a week at the studio where I always worked with Mike. And we were doing... um, So you were double dipping. Well, no, because all I was working on was Halo at the time. It was just before uh, E3 2000, which was the 10 minute long 5.1 surround sound movie extravaganza. Back then, making a DVD with surround sound was actually quite a project. None of this like iMac, iDVD, easy stuff for all the kids now. This was actually professional stuff. <laughs> so we made that thing, went to, to L.A., played the, the thing for the, the VIPs who were there in the morning to see this thing, and then bang, Alex said, hey, uh, that was Microsoft, and they want to buy us. And I was like, wow, hmm. And that was just, uh, <laughs> that was just after you signed Ten on. days. Ten days after I had huh. actually officially joined Bungie. Huh. Nice timing. Yeah. Strategic. I said, so, well, great, Alex. Yeah. But actually, it was sort of exciting because I'd had a couple of friends who had moved out to Seattle, and I was willing to try a brand new thing. And, and you're, I mean. Plus, trust me, at that moment, Xbox was the only console or platform that was going to actually ship with real-time 5.1 Dolby decoding. In-game. In-game. I mean, it was an amazing thing. It was real-time taking real streams of audio and actually shooting them out as, as Dolby digital surround sound. And I, I just I thought, well, this is the greatest thing ever for a sound and music guy, so I want to get in on that as soon as I can. I figured that we would make Halo 1 and then I would leave. But... That didn't work out. But that's oh. not what happened. Well, you the rest you, is history. I think you also told me that you you ended up being uh, with one of our earlier conversations when I was here that you were really excited about moving to Seattle because you're a really huge like mud hunting fan. Yeah, absolutely. And just really into those guys. And, yeah, you know, Soundgarden's one of your favorite bands. I don't know what he's talking. These are these are pop. Rock and roll bands. Pop, <laughs> oh, the pop and the rock. This is and the, the uh, this yeah. well. This is you know 1999. I see, you know, I told you I saw. Uh, oh come on. You know, Marty, we talk a lot and we say guy? a lot of things. He just was Sean Penn. Harum. Yeah, Harum. That's he was with Sean Penn. He did the music. Uh, he's he's one of those. Who are you talking about? He's one of those. I, I know what band he's in. Just it's, it's Pearl Jam. What's his name? Eddie, Eddie Vedder. Vedder. Eddie Vedder. Vedder. Oh, I said it right at the same time. So I saw Eddie Vedder and I realized say it right. that he had been in the... Oh, that was at the thing you were at, right? You showed me the link. To yeah. the, and you were like, look at all the celebrities and here's my name too. There you nice. go. Right there. Oh, yeah, that's the thing Remember that? Oh, what a shock. Yeah. <laughs> look at me right next to... Oh, Eddie Vedder. Yeah. Oh, Sean Penn. Oh, Marty O'Donnell. Yeah. You and Sean must have had a lot in common politically, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. We <laughs> had a lot of it. We did a bunch of uh, hate the president kind of stuff. Uh, well, it's said to you. All right, so let's just set the record straight. I am the resident... Office raving Republican. conservative. Yeah. I thought that uh, Luke even Tim- more than Republican. I thought yeah. Strowman was with you though. Who? Luke Timmons. I thought. Oh, no, right? no, no. I, but I'm I'm the probably the most raving of. Well, the yeah, because you, you're you're the so there's plenty of Republicans in the office actually. I mean, we're pretty uh, we're actually a pretty um, diverse diverse group. I mean, because we care about diversity. Majority, but uh, there's plenty of normal Republicans in the office. But 
most of them, let's be fair, Marty, have abandoned the current administration, and uh, you're the only one still uh, still backing them. They're staying all the course. Slackers, yeah, you're the one slackers. staying the course. Yeah, M- Marty's had a bit of a surge recently. The surge, because yeah. the surge is working, as yeah. all the Dems know. Yeah, they're, they're uh, I, don't, I just can't well, do this. How, this how can be, we do a if podcast we, if with we, politics? No, if we yeah. go into politics, <laughs> it's just going to be it's going to be really bad. It's yeah, going to feel yeah. like but, you know you might get some people actually the, commenting. Hey, the Marty Army once. is quite political. Thanks, Marty. Marty. I bet you that more people have left comments on the podcast than on the soundtrack on iTunes. I'm just saying. That's true. Anyway, uh, <laughs> let's keep going. Uh, <laughs> so at this point, it's 1999. Oh, we're not done yet. <laughs> no, okay. what's the, the no? I'm sorry. People are going to complain if you're here for like 40 minutes okay, and done. All right, what we're we talking about the sound. No, you it, it's 1999. Soundgarden. Or, no, no, getting back to the Halo <laughs> okay. and to the Bungie. The Halo. So the Bungie. Bungie has just been purchased by Microsoft. Right. So at this point, how many employees are at Bungie? Hmm. Right before the acquisition. So yeah, this is uh, May of. 2000, I bet you there is, is it 45, 50 maybe? Or is it less? Who remembers the story? May of 2000 Four. would have been less than 50. Yeah, it was probably 40. We were what? 60 for Halo 2 when we shipped. Yeah. Maybe was this, was, was Butcher 30s. around then? Was this in the Butcher? No, Butcher was in uh, uh, Bungie West. So, yeah. yeah. Well, he counts for like seven employees. Yeah, anyway, absolutely. So. Just in his brain. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. But his stature kind of like cuts that a little bit. Why do you no, don't? don't why well, you I hate love, short people? He's I tall. T- <laughs> he's highest. <laughs> highest. Uh, yeah. So let's see. Uh, well, it was interesting because we had to, there were some guys that <laughs> you can imagine at Bungie who were in Chicago office, extremely like they do not want to move to Seattle and they do not want to be purchased by Microsoft. So there was some. Uh, cajoling and some little many discussions going on and it was because I, I was one of the brand new employees. I, I didn't feel like it was my place to do a lot of jumping into those discussions but eventually I did and I actually even took a couple of guys out to lunch and said, look, I think this is a good thing. It's good for the company. It's a great opportunity and it, I mean, hello, it turned out to be an amazing opportunity and skyrocketed Bungie to uh, where we are today. I don't remember if it, I don't remember if it was on the air or if it was uh, down at the Central in Kirkland, but I think Dave Dunn and I were talking about this period in Bungie history mm-hmm. and he talked about how a, a big a big important part of the acquisition was because there was so, the initial acquisition was because there were so many people's basically livelihoods on the line in and, and you know Jason and Alex felt responsible for those and getting acquired by well, a place like Microsoft is going to give instant security to a bunch of people in the studio that they really cared you know, about I, and I think that was only part of it. I don't think that was the main motivating factor. Um, That's what I, they told Dave Dunn, apparently. Well, because Dave, you needed to very try naive. to sell, soft sell yeah. everything to Dave. He's very sensitive yeah. to many things. But um, actually, it was the – I think it was – in all honesty, I really think Jason was really excited about the opportunity that the Xbox, that technology presented, and the idea that that – Somebody like Jason and his cohorts, Chucky and Butchie and all these guys could physically get into inside the Xbox and, and tweak it and work with it. And it, it was not a done deal. We didn't know exactly what the hardware was going to do. So we could help sort of direct the hardware. Yeah. I mean, and that was an exciting thing. It was exciting for all of us. And so we all saw it as an opportunity. Now, at the same time, there was the great Myth 2 um, recall. I don't know if you know about that, but... Was this Re- the game that was erased your computer? Just erased your hard drive, not oh, the whole just, computer. Just if you had, a, if yeah. you'd had a floppy didn't, drive, didn't, it wouldn't erase didn't that. didn't erase your CPU <laughs> or your graphics card. It didn't yeah. actually erase it from the just, premises. So. Yes. All the data information and bits on your hard it drive. It just rendered it a very heavy piece of plastic. Now, this yes. is the thing. Uh, wasn't it uh, one of our Japanese salespeople discovered it? Yeah. Actually, Japanese it's funny. I was person? there the... Uh, I happened to be walking into Bungie when that came through. I, I wasn't an employee yet. I was yeah. still a contractor. And I think the guy named Conrad, a guy named Conrad, who was actually an audio programmer along with other programming tasks, uh, got the call and realized what was going on. Or else somebody else got the call and they asked Conrad to check it out. And he had just gone to check out and actually said, yes, it is going to erase people's hard drive. And I happened to walk in when they were yeah. discovering that. It was It was just after... Myth 2 had gone yeah. to uh, the warehouses. I mean, it was done. And uh, boom, that was it. It was like, but you did the right thing. They recalled every single one of those and replaced every disc. And yeah, nobody's so. hard drive got erased nope, by this Nobody's. Process, actually, not a single well, one. Well, the Japanese ladies did. Let's be fair. 
Yeah, it but was she was like a marketing out. lady yeah. or something, so it doesn't really matter. She called she up in the like, press. Maybe she was in the press, me. so it really means nothing. Just, yeah, just installed. pick your disdain carefully, Marty. <laughs> just like, I, you know, we're going to have to field phone calls and mails about pretty much everything you <laughs> yeah. say. No, she <laughs> saved us, but we did wipe yes. her hard drive as a reward. But that, that actually was a very costly move for Bungie. It was like, okay, so... You know, the Christmas bonus wasn't quite as nice that year, so to speak. And uh, then, so, you know, at that point, you had that little cost-incurring problem. And then you were still in heavy-duty production on Halo, which wasn't going to come out for a long time. And Oni, which was also not going to come out for a while. And um, there was a bit of a cash flow concern, which just meant that it, it it made the Microsoft offer look even that much nicer, but it, I, I don't. I think it's sort of a. It would be incorrect to say that this was something Bungie had to do for financial reasons. I don't. I don't think that was it at all. Yeah. But they did give us a, a huge bag of loot, right? A burlap sack yeah, with a dollar sign on it. But it was j- only Jason and, and Alex got it, and they yeah. and they buried it someplace. Yeah. And unfortunately, Jason forgot where he buried it, which yeah. is why but he's the clue still here. is in uh, Halo Three, uh, now on sale. You uh, yes. <laughs> At fine retailers <laughs> in Seven Eleven. But uh, yeah, go ahead. Let's go back to uh, we were joking about this earlier. Uh, Luke was saying, "How would you feel if people were playing the Halo soundtrack as their uh, custom soundtrack mm-hmm. in multiplayer?" Mm-hmm. Now, you you have some strong feelings about custom soundtracks, right? Yes. Uh, certainly, as they relate to the campaign game. Yes. And I'm ha- actually I'm very happy with the way our solution turned out in Halo 3, which is pretty much different than what anybody else has done so far. And it's a very simple solution, which Frank, by the way, I believe you helped with because you came up with a very simple little paragraph to say when, hey, we notice you're playing a custom soundtrack. This is not our ideal way of playing Halo 3 campaign. So if you want to continue, we'll turn off the music for you. And the dialogue, yeah. Period. That way, and it's actually fun. So then you can play the game and hear all the sound effects and, and the ambience. Yeah, and it doesn't wreck your, uh, doesn't wreck your experience. Yeah. But I mean, I always we I've never felt like music was needed in multiplayer. So I I think it's great to be able to have your own. You can choose your own music when you're playing multiplayer. I don't actually. I need the audio cues. I need I'm saying five I, one. We, that's why we don't so give can, it to you. It's like you you should yeah. decide whether you think it's cool yeah. or not, and you can mix it the way you want. But so. You don't get that message if you're playing music in multiplayer. You can play your own music in multiplayer. If you switch over to campaign mode, we're going to say, hmm, we noticed you're doing this. Uh, it's not the optimal experience. The main reason is, is we can't give you a good mix. We can't duck the music under voices. We can't, you know, there, there's no ability for us to give you a good experience with your soundtrack yeah, just and all of our other a, sounds. A flat volume yeah. for the whole, the whole thing. It'd be disaster. And so we just, it's just not the ideal experience. But... If you've played the game already and you know what's going on and you want to just have fun and play your Britney Spears while you're playing Rescue Cortana, you have every right to do that. You just want to hear her talk. The kids have moved on. They're, they're on <laughs> Hannah Montana now. Hannah well. Montana. Yeah. High school Do you musical. know that if you look at iTunes, you'll see, like on the sound, the movie soundtracks page, or at least the other day, it was like number one Hannah Montana, but... I think it was like a, there was a point where number seven or six was the Halo 3 soundtrack. Available yes. now at various That's music That's the first outlets. I've ever seen Hannah Montana. When do we get ours? What's the deal? Yeah, where's our soundtrack? We I don't have We were going to give like to, signed to copies away on the, the podcast universe. to people. BitTorrent. What? I got a <laughs> Frank. I think that's so horrible. You even say that. It's an insult to me. Well, you, that's, he, listen, he's fighting back because you said no one listens to the podcast. So I'd say you two well, are about right. square. <laughs> <laughs> okay, evens. Because uh, we're, we're supposed to get some, right, for yeah, the team yeah. at some point. Uh, it, it's one of those things where in the separation from the mothership Microsoft, there was a, you Mail know, forwarding a issue? shipping issue that about 300 soundtracks went over to Microsoft and somehow... Yeah, didn't get forwarded. Interesting. So we're working on that. We're, we're, don't worry, everybody, we got, everybody at Bungie will get their free signed bottles, though, so we're all yeah. set. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got to hate Mountain Dew. Yeah. If Sketch was here, he'd be talking about how good Gamer Fuel is right now. We should just have Gamer a Gamer Fuel. Yeah, don't, don't get you Michigan people started on soda. You'll be like, oh, Faygo is awesome. Man. What? Soda. Pop. Oh, is that what you call good it? Man, it's a pop, pop. Michigan? He's a Midwesterner. It's pop. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. You want a pop? You want a... 
What? Shasta. Don't you remember that? Shasta Cola. Oh. No, is that a, I thought that was like a, an actress from the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> Shasta Cola. They still sell it, I believe. It's a, it's a Chicago jingle. That no, see. Um, so you were in Michigan? Yep, northern Michigan. Wow. Big oh, Bulls northern. fan, though, because I hated no. the Pistons. Oh, yeah, good job. Michael Jordan. <sighs> Those were the glory days. King of all humans. He is. If he, he should could, be king. He, he should, should actually be king of the world. He should just be king of the world, yeah. Right, yeah. We, he, were, uh, we realized last night we were chatting about this on the way home was that, that people stopped watching basketball properly the year after Jordan quit because mm-hmm. I think everyone was hoping well Somehow. maybe he'll come back like yeah. from baseball and then <laughs> but well, then he just did no he did he came back and then he quit uh, and then he came he, back again he retired three times yeah I yeah, went to the, his uh, that, was that it like last the time was a like pre Kobe. so there was a point gentlemen where I was sitting on the floor on, at, at the Chicago Stadium and Michael Jordan's sweat actually fell on me yeah see I'm not kidding. That actually happened. I went to his. Uh, I went to his dude. like six. What? Not Michael Jordan sweat. Well, it Hello? doesn't imbue with magical properties. <laughs> well, and he's well, this is why I'm here today. Maybe that's why Marty got tall. <laughs> I was very short before that, and I couldn't compose. <laughs> <laughs> and then suddenly, man, we should go talk to Jordan see if we can get some juices on us. We could do some better stuff. I don't want Jordan's juice. I can't <laughs> you, you, on me. Your Mr. No Chief way. drawings would step right up. Ooh, well, that would ruin them as you'd be we on the, discovered. You'd be on the character <laughs> art team immediately. Uh, Shakai would report to you. That's true. <laughs> Frank's is always looking for another job, isn't he? No, I don't think so. No? No, I think no, he's... No, no, because he's discouraged. You know, he, he's happy to be at a publisher like Bungie. <laughs> Yeah, nice quote. Yeah, that's right. a that's a reference yeah. to a quote in a recent uh, Farmer. enthusiast yeah. magazine. Enthusiast. Yeah, we're not a publisher. We publish nothing. Well, we publish the website. Oh, well, that's about it. Yeah, in this podcast, when uh, it's available on the, the download podcast. servers after 16 days of sitting there. Mm. Awesome. Extra, extra, excellent. Are we? Uh, how are we doing on time? I think that uh, I th- actually think I think it's time for you to probably go home. You got to get home, watch the news. Yeah, you like yeah. to watch that evening news, news, curl up, Fox news, Fox curl news. up with the Afghan, curl up with Bill O'Reilly. Yeah, mm. speaking truth to power. <laughs> Take that, Obama. <laughs> <laughs> so we will be back. I think we're going to try and squeeze one more show in before the holidays, and I'm pretty sure that on the next week's show we talked to him today. I think we're going to have Harold Ryan on, oh, which is. Huh. A, a, I'm pretty excited to to talk to Harold because Not Harold yet. has a bunch of pretty hilarious things that he does that are just uh, a natural part of his personality. Like hey, here's what you have to do: you got to get more beer. Harold's going to talk like this, and you're going to talk like this, and you're not going to really understand what he's saying. I'm going to fix it in post. You, you're going to have to We're make him, get him say, "Harold, project diaphragm." You have to do if, that. Once Let's Harold has had three beers, he talks just fine. <laughs> Good. I'm glad to hear that. And Marty, when you have some time. I think it would be great to arrange that Halo 2 ending. And we should, uh, we yeah, should that would rearrange fun. the uh, Bungie podcasting. The well, we actually Bungie should. podcast we, jingle. We probably should. We should talk that. about something like that. Or even, even if there's a snippet from the Halo 3 soundtrack that you think would be a f- more fitting intro or something else. I don't know. If you don't want to redo a whole jingle, you sort of made a wrinkly face. Yeah. Well, it's because. It's if you'd rather sing, that's fine. Well, I'm all for singing. Well, singing is good. But I, th- I think you need a little bit. Something a little on the comedy relief side because the rest of the podcast is so humorless and, and empty. Humorless, yeah. yeah, it's just this vapid. So the opening needs to be light and funny. Yeah, because the rest of it's super intense. Mm-hmm. All right, well, we will be back uh, much sooner than we have been recently, and then we'll be going away again because uh, it's the holidays. Christmas. Yeah, Christmas, we're off for the week. Holidays. Yeah, it's the holidays, but I mean. But I'll right. be gone for Christmas. I'll be gone for yeah. Christmas. I, I'll be home for just, Christmas. <laughs> I'm going for the holidays. I don't care what it's for. My I folks, don't even want to go away. You got to go to Jersey. That's why you don't care. You know, you know what they're doing for a treat this year? Seriously? Go oh. to see a show in Atlantic City. Okay, this is a treat. My folks are actually moving to Seattle. So the Surly Dwarf will be in the city in 14 that, days. That's useful for you, though. Yeah, it's great. Because now all your visits are like a short drive. There you go. Yeah, yeah, and you can take my, care of them. And I get my dad to be, uh, you know. Jersey, I'm going to kill myself. Do some more voices on the future projects. Interesting and exciting. Mm. Is, your, is your dad uh, in the Actors Guild? Or yes, actors he's, guild? He's, How do you get into that, by the way? Uh, been, you, it's, it's you pay some dues? No, you actually, you actually you have, have, to have, be, to have, been, you have to have been in a SAG or AFTRA production, and then you get Taft-Hartley, and then you 
get to on the next gig, you get to join the actors union. Yeah, it's exactly like so. It's like basically you're just like you're not allowed to be in. Yeah, <laughs> ostensibly objects to as a do. conservative until it like pays yeah, you know exactly. something for me and until he like, gets hey, a that's dollar a good every deal. two weeks. Cool. For being in it. <laughs> so my guest up my like guest spot on Shark will get me into the guild basically. Absolutely. All right, cool. Did you get Taft Hartley? I uh, can't talk about it. Oh, <laughs> you were guest on what? Uh, we'll be back soon <laughs> with another episode of the Bungie Podcast. If you have positive feedback, send it to Frank or Sketch. If you have any complaints, criticisms, or general whining, you can send it to me. And we'll be back soon. Bungie Studios podcast is mixed and mastered by Steve Lopez, produced by Tom Giaconda and Chris Gossett, and hosted by Brian Gerard, Frank O'Connor, Luke Smith, and Bungie Studios.